What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to a Mega Count the Ways conspiracy. I made a video about two weeks ago from when I'm recording this, all about the hidden details that you could have missed in Count the Ways, and by the end of researching that video, I think I, I came up with something big. I did brush it off as a stupid hypothesis at the time, but the more I've come to think about it, the more I believe it to be a mega conspiracy. So before we get into the details of this video, then make sure that you hit the subscribe button um, for more videos like this. Of course, I really enjoy making these and also the breakdowns too. Go and watch them. Now we should probably start with how Count the Ways fits into the other stories. Or should I say, we should start with how it doesn't. Count the Ways at the moment is a very isolated story in the fact that it has not been referenced yet in the Stitch Wraith continuity or in any other stories really. Stories like Room for One More connected to Into the Pit because they had locations that had the same name. You could tell that they were both in a shared universe. Count the Ways is independent. There's no similar locations, no tie-ins with any other stories, and it's questionable on whether it will be part of the bigger picture uh, in, in the final epilogues. But for now, this story is its own thing, and uh, there's a big reason that I need to point this out. That means that what happens in this story has to somehow be explained by inside information only. We can't really say that Eleanor was behind all of this because we don't even know if she exists in the same universe. It's really hard to use the concept of agony uh, in, in this for, for the same kind of reasons. Um, so the big point is we need to be able to explain everything in this story under one independent theory. And I think I have a conspiracy that could be that. Let's first point out all of the things that need to be explained. First, we need to know where Funtime Freddy came from in the first place. Second, we need to find out why he's so persistent in killing Millie. Thirdly, we need an explanation as to how he knows Millie's name and where her parents are from, but also why he knows so much about the history of death. And finally, I guess the final thing that needs to be explained is, is this real or is this all in Millie's head? I do think I have an explanation for most of these things, but I guess it's down to you guys to decide uh, whether whether it is. <laughs> the other thing I want to say is that this conspiracy is only a theory, of course, uh, and it may not be the true explanation of the story, but it's a very fun perspective, at least. I think we should start with what happens in the story. The whole premise is that Millie fantasizes over death. She thinks of death as an attractive, cloaked being. She likes to read literature about death and listen to music about death. She's a goth girl, and it interferes in her whole life. It interferes with friendships and her family and when she's put in a position to die she doesn't actually want to. In this context there's two different types of death, one that Millie romanticizes and one that she fears. Of course at Christmas she finds herself in Funtime Freddy with no, uh, no escape except death. So let's get the elephant out of the room. Is this all a dream? We do know that Millie falls asleep in the Freddy to supposedly wake up to his booming voice. So I guess there is a whole argument that all of this isn't actually real. I actually think that the concept of this being in her head as a fear and trapped in her own thoughts quite literally is a really cool way to take this story. But in my opinion, it makes the ending a little bit more disappointing. That being said, we never actually see if she dies or not. She could have at that point woken up properly but I have a few problems with it all being in her head. Like, it does seem extremely realistic, and it's strange if she's able to make up a voice for Freddy in her head. But also, Freddy says so many facts about the history of death, like, I don't know if Millie would know all of that. As I say, there's two different types of death. She doesn't, she doesn't romanticize over that kind of death. She doesn't really want to focus on like murder and punishments back in the olden days. Um, she even literally says at one point, meat was gross and also murder. What I'm trying to say is that this story is a lot better plot wise and a lot better explained too if Funtime Freddy was actually talking to Millie and none of this was in her head. So that begs the question, where did he come from? We know that Grandpa is a big collector. Millie didn't exactly know what specific group of things he collected. Nevertheless, he liked to collect old license plates and hubcaps, 
old baseball bats and tennis rackets, souvenir plates, old porcelain baby dolls and antique swords, and he even has a full suit of armour and a menacing taxidermy bobcat. It's a very strange collection of random items, and not only Millie thinks this, it's mentioned that her grandpa is actually considered weird in this town that they live in. We also know that he has a Funtime Freddy in his garage, but how did it get there? Funtime Freddy himself explains when Millie asks why he wants to kill her. Interesting you should ask. There are a couple of reasons actually. The first is quite simply that it's something to do. I sat in a salvage yard for ages before your grandpa found me and brought me here. Where I've just been sitting too. I've been bored out of my skull. Not that I have a literal skull, but you know what I mean. And this scrapyard could have been the same scrapyard where Eleanor was found uh, by Sarah in To Be Beautiful, but again, we have no evidence for that because we don't even know if she's in the same universe. It would make sense, seeing as they're both Funtime styled, um, so they could have come from the same place, as in Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals. Um, but what's the real reason that he wants to kill her? And plus, there's my second reason, which is that death is what she wants. You've been mooning around since you moved here, talking about how you want to die. Well, I like to kill people and you want to die. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. Wait, wait a second. How does he know that? How does a robot that's been deactivated in the back of a garage this entire time know that Millie is obsessed with death? And while we're on the topic, how does he know that her parents are from Saudi Arabia? How does he know all these random facts about the history of death? Heck, how does he even know Millie's name? This is where my mega conspiracy comes in. The conspiracy that the person behind the Funtime Freddy, the person responsible for killing Millie, and the mastermind behind this entire story is none other than Grandpa himself. Before you say anything, I have a few points to make about this. As we've already mentioned, Grandpa is known in the town for being weird, but he seems to be innocent in the story. He truly wants Millie to be happy and to eat well while she's staying with him, but that's the whole twist. As innocent as Grandpa first seems, he is clearly sick of Millie's attitude and lifestyle choices. The non-stop talk about death and the poetry symbolising the concept, the decoration in her room and the music that she listens to, the, the fact that she wears makeup to make herself look more pale when she needs to eat more. Grandpa wants to uh, look after her, but just can't push all the right buttons. So what does he do? He plans to give her the wish that she doesn't stop talking about. What if Funtime Freddy was made, or better, reprogrammed by Grandpa himself? I'd imagine he found the robot in a scrapyard, like he said, and used as a method of torture. That would explain why Funtime Freddy knows so much about death in general, but also about Millie and her family. When she crawls inside and falls asleep, Grandpa does find her, but he doesn't pull her out. He shuts the door and activates the robot. Because that's the thing, it was deactivated this entire time, so somebody must have activated it. I do really like this conspiracy, uh, in all fairness, it explains a lot and it makes the story a bit more sinister, but unfortunately, I do have to point out one thing that goes against this, and I'm really sad that this exists. And that's the ending, okay? Well, while Millie is in the Freddy, Grandpa goes into the kitchen and apparently breaks down and calls her. Now this could be a result of guilt, um, but I have to admit that it, it just sounds like he doesn't know that she's in the Freddy. Whether you believe in the conspiracy or not though, you have to admit it's a pretty cool thought. I like these kinds of stories that have extremely subtle clues uh, that could pretty much change the entire way you look at the story depending on how you take it. But hopefully in the final epilogues uh, it will all be explained or it will just be left as an unsolved mystery. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you tell me in the comments what you think about this conspiracy. I want to believe it just because of how cool of a plot point it is story-wise, but I understand if you don't think it was the intention of the story. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you in another video. Goodbye.